Van Dijk in Wijk, Sheikh Akram Baksh, Imam of Slavsky Mosque, to come here and to provide this beautiful lecture from the Quran and Sunnah, inshallah. The individual social engagement, as it is in this and also. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. It's such an honor, a pleasure to be standing here today, mashallah, traveling for one year around Australia, meeting my dear brothers from the IPDC units in various cities in Australia. It is truly a historical moment for this masjid. MashaAllah, to see all of our brothers who have contributed towards this great effort under this one roof in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Brisbane. And I pray to Almighty Allah that Allah unite us and keep us united until the day of Qiyamah, inshaAllah. We say ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for arranging this very important event. We always begin by praising Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is most kind, most generous, most loving, the creator, the sustainer, the nourisher and provider. And we always send abundant salutations upon Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the words of Nabi Ibrahim. 
Rabbi inna hunna adlanna kathiran minan nas. The Prophet of Allah recited the words of Ibrahim, Ya Allah, my Rabb, many people have been led astray. فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي Those who follow me, they are with me. وَمَنْ عَصَانِي And those who disobey me, فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Ya Allah, you are most gracious and most merciful. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then recites the words of Isa alayhi salam, Jesus. إِن تُعَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُكُ Ya Allah, if you punish them, they are your slaves. وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ but Ya Allah, if you forgive them, Ya Allah, you are almighty and wise. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he raises his hands, فَرَفَعَ يَدَيْهِ And he makes dua, Allahumma ummati, ummati, Allahumma ummati, ummati, wa baka. He says, Oh Allah, my nation, my nation, Oh Allah, my nation, my nation. Tears begin to fall from the Mubarak face of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, commands Jibreel, Ya Jibreel, idhab ila Muhammad, fas'alhu ma yubaki. O Jibreel, go to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ask him, why is he crying? La ilaha illallah. Why is he crying? And of course, Allah azza wa jal was well informed of the reason of the cry of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After relating the message, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then commands Jibreel, Go back, idhab ila Muhammad. Go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and inform him, inna sanurdika fi ummatik. That indeed we will please him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to his ummah. And we will never allow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be sad. Allahu Akbar. Look at the tremendous love that is expressed here in this hadith. This hadith becomes in Bukhari and Muslim. The tremendous love that Allah Azza wa Jal had for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And look at the love and the compassion that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for his Ummah. This was the concern, the worry of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that how every single human being can attain success. How every single human being, my dear brothers, can be successful not only in this world, but also in the hereafter. We all know the purpose of why we are here. What is our purpose as Muslims? We all know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Dhariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal says that I have not created man and jinn except for my worship. That we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we gain His pleasure. And in order to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are steps that must be taken. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that criteria in the Qur'an, in Surah Ali Imran, where Allah azza wa jal says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ لا إله إلا الله Allah Azza wa Jal says, say on Muhammad, that if you love Allah, then follow the ways of Rasulullah. صلى الله عليه وسلم Following the footsteps of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in return, يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ Allah will love you. Do we not want the love of Allah? Do we not want Allah to love us? Of course. So يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ That by following the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will love us. And not only that, وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah azza wa jal will forgive our sins. Wallahu ghafoor rahim Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He is most kind, most merciful. My dear respected brothers and elders, a person that believes in Allah is not sufficient without believing in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and vice versa. Iman, Tawheed is not complete 
without Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And as Muslims, we need to focus on how much of the sunnah do we have practical in our life? How much are we following? We speak about the amazing personality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We study his seerah in fine detail. But the question is, how many of us are implementing the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because if we are not, then how do we expect to achieve success? How do we expect to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wa ridwanu min Allah. The pleasure of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ Whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brings to our attention, we must take from it. And that which he prohibits, we abstain from it. Whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prohibited, Allah has prohibited. Whatever Allah has prohibited, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prohibited. And if we study the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we study the Qur'an and the sunnah teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the ways to attain his pleasure is to adopt and implement the akhlaq, the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For there was no man who roamed the surface of the earth who had better mannerism, adab, respect, good character than Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we all know, was the best of examples. Even the enemies of Islam, they acknowledge the outstanding mannerism, the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What more can be said after Allah azza wa jal himself in the Quran, he praises the mannerism, the akhlaq, the character of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah Al-Qalam, verse number 5. وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And indeed, we have sent the best of characters. Who was that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The best of characters, this is the words of Allah. Allah is proclaiming in the Qur'an, regarding, making it very clear that we have sent the best of characters. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That indeed in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the best of ways. So let us go through because in order to achieve the pleasure of Allah and the love of Allah we need to understand. Let us go through some of the unique points, characteristics and mannerism of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let us keep an open mind and pose these questions to ourselves constantly throughout this lecture. That do I have this quality in my life? Because Islam is not about entertainment. Islam is not about, oh, subhanallah, mashallah, and it ends there. No, it's about hearing, sami'na wa ata'na. It's about listening to the commands of Allah and the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and questioning, questioning ourselves, do I have this quality in my life? Do I, does this quality exist in my life or not? This is a serious question that we need to all ask ourselves. Without a doubt, one of the most unique qualities of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his humility. He was very humble. Sometimes our positions can take us to another level. I am president, I am imam, I am this. No. We always go back to the source. We always go back to our leader, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In today's time, we find when someone invites us, we look at the invitation. Oh, it's not famous enough. Put it aside. Is this Islam? No. For the Prophet ﷺ, he used to accept invitations from slaves. He used to enjoy accepting invitation from slaves. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the greatest man to roam the surface of the earth. In today's time, we go to an invitation, and when we come back, we start complaining, oh, his wife can't cook. Too much salt in the curry, too much salt in the biryani, not enough ghosts, not enough meat, only potato, I don't see any meat. 
And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to accept invitations where old barley bread and old stale fat was served as a meal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he possessed a saddle that was worth less than three dirhams. What are we compared to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So this was a unique quality of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he was humble. He was humble subhanallah. He was never made to be like a big shot. He was so humble sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another unique quality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his compassion and love towards children. And this is very important. And who was the young lad who spent time with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Who can tell me? Some say Abdullah ibn Abbas, and that is not correct. Who was the young lad who spent many years with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Zayd, mashallah, all the answers. Unfortunately, it's wrong. It's Anas ibn Malik. <laughs> right, Anas. And it is important that we understand this history. Now imagine, he was a young lad. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made migration, hijrah to Medina, people presented him with gifts. And there was a very pious lady who approached Rasulullah and said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I have nothing to give. But I have this young boy. Take him under your right hand. Educate him. And let him serve you. Let him be your student. So Anas ibn Malik being so young, being so young, what did he say about the Prophet wasallam? It was not his child. It wasn't a relative. He had amazing things to say about Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this should bring two things to our attention. The compassion that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had towards young children, and also being a supervisor, having a worker. How did he treat his worker? So Anas bin Malik, he says, خَدِمْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَشْرَ سِنِينَ he says, I served the Prophet ﷺ for 10 years. He says, Wallahi ma qala uffin qat. He says, not once did the Prophet of Allah ever reprimand me. He never questioned me. Lima fa'alta kada wa kada. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? But in today's time, with our being the boss, we show that we are the boss. We start screaming at our workers. May Allah forgive us. He says, not once did he ever say, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? He says, Wallahi ma ra'aytu ahadan kana arhama bi'iyali min rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, by Allah. Imagine he takes an oath by Allah. I have not seen anyone who exhibited more mercy and compassion towards children than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. And as we know, once Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very fond of Hassan and Hussein. And he was holding the two of them and he came for salah. And of course he brought these two young boys to the masjid. He was very fond of them. So he placed them on the side. He went forward to make the salah. So while he was, of course, his Imam al Anbiya, the Imam of the Prophets, he leads the salah, and whilst in salah, he goes into sujood. And he extended his sujood to such a degree that the sahaba were very worried. What has happened to the Prophet? Has he passed away? Or is he receiving revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So one of the sahabi from behind, he pops his head up in salah to see what's going on. This is a very long sujood. And then he sees a child a child playing on the back of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then eventually, the salah came to an end. The sahaba, it was their norm that they would pose questions to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, we noticed today, we got very worried. 
We thought something happened to you. We thought that you passed away or we thought that revelation you received wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during your salah. What was his reply? He says, this young boy of mine, irtahalani, fakarihtu an u'ajjilahu qabla an yaqadhi hajatahu. Subhanallah. He says, I dislike to disturb the child playing on my back. And I waited for the child to fulfill his needs of play. Imagine Qadaul Haja, the Prophet of Allah, is looking at this child and he knows in Salah that this child needs to fulfill his rights. And what is his right? His right is to play. Even though he is the Imam and he's playing on his back, look at the compassion and the love. Displayed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam towards children. Another unique quality, my dear brothers, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had, that whatever, whoever he spent time with, he made them feel special. It is very important that when we greet our brothers, regardless of who they are, we show them love and affection. We show them muhabbah. And this was the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a hadith which comes in Tirmidhi, where Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhu, he is sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they are having a conversation. And Amr is looking and he's thinking to himself, Subhanallah, look at how the Prophet, he is, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is treating me so well. He's showing me so much respect and he's making me feel so special. And he felt so confident that he asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, Am I the best person in this community? Imagine he felt so confident, he felt so special, that he posed such a daring question to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, Oh Messenger of Allah, am I the best person in this entire community? And of course the Prophet did not butter him up and lie to him. In a nice way he says, No, Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And he posed a second question, he said, Ya Rasulullah, am I second in line? He says, no, right? Omar. And then he still posed a third question, am I third in line? Am I the third best person? <clears throat> he says, no. He says, Uthman. Then Umar ibn al-As, he says, Wallahi, I wish I did not pose this question to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The lesson here, my dear brothers, is look at how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this brother, this great sahabi, feel special. And this is very important. When we speak to people, when we sit in their company, it is so important that we address every person in a special way, making them feel special. When we greet them, we shake their hands, we smile, we make them feel important. We show them good character. We show them the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are many qualities and time does not permit me to go further. However, my dear brothers, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith comes in Bukhari, he defines faith. What is faith? What is complete iman? What is complete faith in Islam? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أَكْمَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا A person who has perfect faith is the one who has the best of character. The one who has the best of character. And as we all know, my dear brothers, in this short time that we have in this world, we all know, we all believe in the scale, Sahih? That scale that will determine our success or our destruction. So what will be the most weightiest action? An action that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, hadith comes in Muslim, inna athqala shay'in. يُوضَعُ فِي الْمِيزَانِ الْمُؤْمِنِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ خُلُقٌ حَسَنٌ That indeed the most weightiest action that will be placed on the scale on judgment day will be a person's good akhlaq. Would be a person's good character. The Prophet of Allah did not mention fasting. He did not mention salah. In this hadith specifically, the Prophet ﷺ is mentioning good character. Why is good character so important? Why is good character complete faith as the Prophet sallallahu mentioned? It is so important. Why? Because it leaves behind an everlasting legacy. 
When a person has good akhlaq, when we see him, we smile. And when he passes away, we shed tears. We make dua of maghfirah for that person. And the opposite, if a person was known to have bad character, if a person was known to be someone mean in the society, when he leave this world, when we remember him, we say, Alhamdulillah, he's gone. Do we want to be amongst the first category or the second? And this is the question we need to ask ourselves. That we leave a legacy behind where people remember us in a positive way, in a way that gains the dua of this individual. So my dear respected brothers and elders, in order to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is vital in this short period of time that we are granted in this world to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to follow in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I urge you all, especially in these days, these very blessed days of Yom al-Hijjah, I, I urge you all to perform more good deeds, to increase in your Quran recitation, to do more good deeds, to give charity, to fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to study the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I cannot urge you enough. There are many great books out there, my dear respected brothers and elders. One of the most famous books are al rahiq al Maktum, the Seal Nectar, which is an authentic book on the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Get hold of this book. It costs $40, but wallahi, study the book in fine detail. Understand the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in fine detail. And this is our obligation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ja'alna min al-fa'izin. Allahumma ja'alna min al-muttaqin. Allahumma ja'alna min al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haq. Wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'irin muslimina fa astaghfiru. Innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim.